Welcome to another video from the Heart Factory. Now today's video is about the various cannulae we use in cardiopulmonary bypass, right from the aortic cannula, the various types of venous cannulae, the cardioplegia cannula, the vent and the cardiotomy sucker. So uh, the discussion will be on the design of the cannula, how to insert or the, the technique to place this cannula in patient, what the surgeon has to see, what the perfusion team will be looking forward to once you use this cannula and the various pros and cons of using various types of uh, these cannulas in clinical scenario. So the first thing we'll start with is the aortic cannula and with me is uh, Mr. Janardhan, he's our chief perfusion technologist. Yep. And um, Jana will just take you first uh, through the various cannulas, what he will be anticipating once you as a surgeon use the cannula in the patient. What he expects from the cannula, what you should know as a surgeon for with respect to the cannula, other things this video is going to talk about. So coming to the aortic cannula first, Jana. In cardiopulmonary bypass, uh, venous blood is uh, withdrawn and it is oxygenated in the heart-lung machine and uh, given back to arterial system through iota. So this particular cannula, what I'm showing is uh, IoT cannula. So through this, uh, the arterialized blood, the oxygenated blood is returned through this cannula to the patient. And this particular cannula is uh, designed to put in ascending aorta. So this aortic cannula, they come in various designs. So as a perfectionist, what I have to, I have to choose the size of the cannula based on the uh, pump flow rate that is uh, calculated for that particular patient. This pump flow rate is uh, calculated based on the BSA, body surface area and the cardiac index. So BSA multiplied by cardiac index gives you the total pump flow rate. This cannula should be having a lesser pressure gradient and the design is as you can see here it is very gradually tapered and narrowed here at this end. So this is the, the narrowest part of the cannula. The idea is it should not be narrowed throughout its course. It should be we require only it to be narrowed at the tip where it is actually inserted. What I mean to say is this will be a factor in reducing the pressure differential across and giving the maximum flow rates and uh, here you can see the tip is a metal tip one and uh, we have something called as id od ratio internal diameter to outer diameter uh, this will tell you how thinner the tip is and how wider the lumen of the cannula is. This is what we require. And uh, we have a curved tip, we have a straight tip. This is also an AOT cannula as you can see and we also have a just angled tip. All these are cannulas which is meant to put into the ascending aorta. And uh, as regards with the uh, cannulating uh, technique used in each cannula, uh, Dr. Suresh will be telling you. This is the arterial cannula. Now, arterial cannula by default means something which is inserted into the arterial circuit and depending on the arterial circuit you choose, you choose the cannula. Now, there are three ways of uh, using the arterial circuit to establish cardiopulmonary bypass. The commonest being the ascending iota the second commonest being the femoral artery and the third being the axillary artery. Now, if you have to use the femoral or the axillary artery as the route for uh, establishing anti-grade flow, then this cannula will not be of help. So, naturally, the design of the cannula is based on the site of its use. Now, this is an angled tip, steel angled tip arterial cannula with a flange. So there is an angle here, the tip is b weld and um, there's a flange, there's a line here which says that 
when you put the cannula the line should be away or towards the anesthetist or head end of the patient and then you have a connector which is connected to the uh, connector which is connected to the arterial line coming from the perfusion team now if you look at this cannula it is supple so this is not wire reinforced this is right angled now what is the advantage of this uh, of this type of angled cannula is with the beveled tip is now when you this gives a flow which is like a jet so this gives a jet flow and the perfusion team is flowing the blood at the rate of 2.2 or 2.4 liters per minute per meter square which is the standard for an anesthetized patient the whole blood is running through this as a jet so imagine when it is in the aorta the jet is going to hit some part of the aortic wall and if you have an arteriomma there the arteriomma would progress advantage is jet flow disadvantage is jet injury second thing when you put this cannula in the ascending aorta the tip may get into one of the neck vessels the carotid vessels thereby selectively perfusing that particular head vessel so selective cannulation or selective perfusion of one of the three neck vessels of course the left septum is far away probably the brachiocephalic or the left uh, carotid may get selectively perfused if you are not careful and if the tip is into one of those vessels the commonest problem with this cannula is when you put it and you you allow it to lie like this it comes and hits the anterior wall of aorta in which case the perfusion will say that there is a very high gradient the problem can be solved by just tilting the cannula and bringing it away from the anterior wall of the aorta now this beveled tip has a a very strong or rather id od ratio which gives a very less gradient at this tip now the idea of this gradient is the ideal gradient which the perfusion team expects is around 100 mm of mercury at the tip which is the narrowest part of the cpb circuit so anything more than 100 leads to hemolysis so the perfusion team selects the cannula based on the body surface area and based on which a cannula is chosen that will give a gradient that is not greater than 100 mm of mercury now the bevel the, the edge is a bit right angle so the advantage is when you put this cannula in the aorta you put it first directed towards the aortic valve and then turn it around so the logic here is when you put the cannula towards the aortic valve and then you if you are able to turn it towards the head end of the patient so that the line is facing the anesthetic side that itself rules out dissection because you cannot turn the cannula unless you are in the ascending aorta so that is a very important maneuver so if you are turning it by putting it first and then that means you are ruling out dissection of the aorta 100% the rate of which is i guess is 0.003% second thing is once you are in the aorta the flange the flange is both hemostatic and it also helps in securing the cannula by means of pushing sutures to the ascending part of the aorta the the line should be towards the anesthetist now since the cannula is not wire reinforced it's likely to get kinked so you have to make sure that once the tubing is connected at the head end in a air free manner that this lies without any kink now to overcome the disadvantage of this type of cannula is wire reinforcement so wire reinforcement so what is a wire reinforcement a wire reinforcement 100% assures that the cannula cannot get folded on itself and there cannot be an obstruction having said that this type of cannula the more recent ones come in the form of um come with a design that can be inserted through the selling a technique what i what to mean is you can use this type of cannula pass a guide wire then the stillet and over the stillet you can pass this cannula now if you look at this cannula it is wire reinforced from the top to the bottom there is no bevel here it's rather an end hole again the problem with this this is a jet it gives a jet flow the problem here is again it may give atherogenous emboli because the jet may hit 
areas of iota which may have atheromatous areas and that may lead to shower of the atheromatous uh, material. There are markings on the cannula which is one centimeter apart and tells you how much inside you are in the ascending iota. There is also a problem with this cannula is if you think it is a problem is now when you push this whole stillet when the nursing staff gives you at the time of insertion of this cannula there is a rather blunt rather sharp it's not sharp blunt end now if you put too much inside you may likely to injure the posterior aortic valve so that is one of the disadvantages of this cannula advantage is wire reinforced it will not kink again any cannula that is wire reinforced should not be clamped so the area of clamping is this area so this is a bit about the wire reinforcement having said the same thing you will find another type of cannula now rather more commonly used in pediatrics it's again the wire tipped wire reinforced cannula but the edge is b weld you can see the edge is b weld now again there is marking on this which is 1 cm apart. Again this cannula because it's B weld you should make sure that the B weld edge is directed towards the arch so that the flow is going towards the arch into the rest of the body. It again gives a jet flow. I am stressing on jet flow because there is something called a shower type of uh, perfusion as well. Cannulas which have a basket tip and gives rather a shower type of flow in the body. The risk of atheroembola is less with that, but there is difficulty in using the cannula. We don't have one to demonstrate. Again, the wire reinforcement means you need not clamp here. You clamp at the top. It has a stillet which will help you in passing the cannula into the iota. And once you're in the iota, you can remove this near the cannula and connect it to the uh, tubing. So there are various type of these cannulas. Uh, based on the pediatric use and adult use as well. It's fun. Uh, then one simple thing is again you find another type of cannula which is wire, not wire reinforced but again the B-weld. It is not steel tipped, it's just the uh, plastic tipped as well. It has a stopper there. Again, the, but here the line is should be f facing the foot end of the patient. So before you use any cannula, make sure if there is a line where it should be directed to. And in this case, it is directed towards the foot end of the patient. Whereas the first cannula which we saw, the line has to be directed towards the head end of the patient. Wire reinforcement is very much important because it avoids kinking of the cannula. And um, now the beveled edge, as usual said, it can cause jet effect. It can cause selective cannulation of the neck vessels. And um, if it is hitting the interval of the iota, you, the perfusion team may complain of higher gradients. Now these are all the cannulas we described for use in the ascending iota. But there is something called, because I told you femoral artery is also one of the places where you can use the cannula and axillary artery is also the place where you can use the cannula. Now for the femoral artery, Jana, yeah, these are the uh, cannulas where again the oxygenated blood is returned to the patient. Yes, Only thing is these are peripheral cannulas. Uh, till now we were uh, talking about the central aortic cannulas. These are cannulated peripherally like in uh, femoral artery. So this particular cannula again this same uh, you know parameters you have to look in for uh, like uh, its pressure gradient and how uh, much maximum flows it can give uh, such kind of thing. You can see it is uh, quite uh, you know longer one and it has again multiple holes at the tip uh, which can prevent uh, that uh, jet effect of it and uh, due to which uh, sand blasting uh, phenomena can take place where atheroma is destroyed and that can cause embolism. So to prevent that this particular design is made and you can see again the wire reinforcement. This particular port here is meant to you know measure the uh, you know the pressures in the vessel. So which is very important because this is a peripheral one and uh, where there is more possibility of you know uh, dissection or something. So we have to particular uh, you know such kind of ports are provided for that where then you can measure the pressure of that the uh, arterial uh, pressure you can measure through it and it has got a stillet in it and its uh, counterpart for uh, pediatric uh, uh, 
we have here this is a you know a pediatric femoral cannula this particular cannula is of the same size and the use for pediatric patients now as said before femoral some with the advent of mix lot of patients underwent minimal invasive surgery are can have are cannulated through the femoral vessels for minimal invasive cardiac surgery so these are longer worms how you can let the femoral artery you i'll show the video so there are multiple side holes so that uh, the the flow is in a dispersive way and it's a bit longer because you will be passing it through the right groin and probably this is lying into the just above the bifurcation of the uh, abdominal aorta there is a port here which can be used to measure the pressure and at the same time deaerate if there is some air in the circuit and you can use this to the seldinger technique the same type of cannula can also be found or used in the ascending aorta but the design is a bit different something which has a knob at the top so if you use it for the ascending aorta with the knob at the top you can make you should make sure that the knob is tight if you want to use the knob use it to measure the ascending aortic pressure just in case while it's coming off bypass if your radial line is not working well you can use this to measure the central pressure and if there's air in the line more often than not you can just you open this line and just tilt the cannula to get the air out of the cannula so this is in general about the cannulation of the arterial tree so things we should know before you cannulate the ascending aorta or the femoral aorta is how uh, the femoral artery is that there should be no atherosclerosis at the point of your entry always palpate and if you have te make sure that the place you are entering is free of atheroma in case of femoral artery it is usually a ct angiogram done of the whole abdominal aorta to tell you if there are any calcific plaques uh, because you don't want to have a retrograde shower of the um, atheromatous material into the brain coming to the axillary artery cannulation especially in dissections and uh, Uh, large cases people usually anastomose a graft a ptfe graft to the artery and through the graft they use one of the standard cannulas to perfuse the rest of the body and later at the end of the case the graft is then divided and sewn in place advantage is you always need an arterial inflow for cardiopulmonary bypass the tips and tricks of how to pass them you will see you will be seeing it as a video every cannula has its own advantage and disadvantage so one has to be aware of the advantage and disadvantage of every cannula and using use it accordingly now which is the best way to insert it the technique which i showed you in the iot avr cabg um video clean incision of the aorta and then passing the cannula 100% eliminates in the section so i guess that is the cleanest way of inserting the cannula the other way which the books or the literature mention is by using a side biting clamp under vision open the aorta put the cannula and then remove the side biting clamp that is also described as the safest way so depending on the unit practice one may use any ways to cannulate the aorta to establish cardiopulmonary bypass aortic cannulation is the first cannulation done in cardiopulmonary bypass because aorta is easily seen or the femoral artery is easily seen or for that matter the axilla artery a graft is sewn and then the arterial cannula is placed because while scanlating the femoral or the venous system you may have loss of blood so having a cannula in the arterial circuit it's easy to replace by the perfusion team for that loss of venous blood second thing is while you are handling the venous system say the svc ivc or ra you may get supraventricular arrhythmias with hemodynamic compromise and again having a good big line in the aorta for uh, managing hemodynamics and fluids is always useful that's why you always can let the ascending aorta first or the arterial tree first and uh, you, that's the last one to come out after the patient has been reversed with protamine uh, because with protamine also you may have some vasoconstrictive crisis or rather if you even if the patient is not having vasoconstrictive crisis you whilst the protamine is being given you want the reservoir level whatever blood is there in the reservoir to be given back to the patient if there is no air in the line and at the same time if the patient has or crashes because of protamine you need to just put in a venous line and reestablish cardiopulmonary bypass 
that's why this is the line last line to come out and the first to go in for the technique i'll put it as a short video so i guess um, you all have liked this video if so please click the like button and subscribe to my channel would also request you to ring the bell just to be notified of our next video in time your comments will be very helpful so please do spend some time to write down a few notes or comments about things which you might have thought that we forgot or didn't mention and so that um, the others will also benefit from this uh, keep watching this space for future videos thanks for watching thank you thank you